Welcome back, Cannon Faithful, for another Cannon Fodder Breakdown. This week focuses on the upcoming inclusion of the Arbiter in Killer Instinct, an addition I am certainly looking forward to, and its place in the canon. Now I know what you're thinking, how could any of this be canon? The short answer is, it's not. However, there is canon surrounding the Arbiter, the various character skins, and the stage that this character calls home. It's similar to the situation with Nicole 458 in that there are canon characters and variations represented, but the events themselves are in no way canon. Side note, when are we going to get the full story on Nicole? Cannon fodder seems like the place to do that. Wink, wink. Anyway, as mentioned, there will be a number of skins for the Sunghealy character in Killer Instinct, so let's take a look. First up is the variant known as Kaiden, taken directly from the Arbiter's appearance in Halo 5. Though not technically pure Kaiden armor, as it has been noted as being a combination of Kaiden and Arbiter designs, the name is apt. In addition to the default gold with red trim, players can unlock other collar combinations to make their Kaiden unique. Next up is the classic Arbiter armor as it appeared in Halo 2 Anniversary. Interestingly, while the Kaiden armor features Thel's Halo 5 physiology, the Arbiter skin has his Halo 2 physiology. After that we have the default Sanghili combat harness, which again features different color variations to allow one to parade around as any rank one wishes. Just don't let the profits catch you. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Next up is the Storm combat harness. Storm elites are specialized shock troopers that have seen more prominence in the post-war era than during the height of the Human Covenant War. The look in Killer Instinct likely invokes images of Ait Savi in the minds of the Canon Faithful, a character I'm sure many would love to see return in Canon proper. After that, we have the Ranger outfit, specifically the variation seen in Halo Reach, followed by the Commander Harness. Interestingly, the description would seem to indicate that this rank was uniquely a post-war one, as it describes officers who served during the Covenant War becoming commanders of their own factions. Perhaps I'm reading too much into that, but I find it interesting. Next up we have the Halo Reach Zealot Armor, which is revealed to have been utilized by a Zealot faction known as the Devoted Sentries. These were the elites deployed to Reach by Supreme Commander Ro Barutami from his fleet of Valiant Prudence during the early weeks of the invasion of Reach. Nice to get a little insight into the unique look of those Zealots. Finally, we have the Ascetic Armor, as it appeared in Halo 3. For those who don't know or may have forgotten, the Ascetic Order was a pre-covenant faith that secretly thrived even after the Writ of Union. During the Great Schism, this faction rose up, donning their unique armor and fighting against the lies of the Prophets, and later, with the Swords of Sanghelios in order to unite their race. So damn, that's a lot of awesome skins with a lot of interesting history. Each Sanghili variant will be equipped with three weapons, the T-51 Carbine, Plasma Grenades, and an Energy Sword, or in the case of the Kaiden skin, the Deadly Prophet's Bane. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at the Arbiter's unique stage the Arena of Judgment. This ancient temple located near the ruins of Nusra was once a place of discussion between Kaidans and the ancient Judge King Arbiters, basically the ancient Roman forums, but as with many once sacred places, it too has fallen into ruin. And that more or less wraps up the main article, bringing us to the universe entry for this week, the single occupant exo-atmospheric insertion vessel, aka the drop pod. Most commonly used by the Orbital Drop Shock Troopers, these pods have also been utilized by Spartans and even for sending in weapons and supplies. The advantages over a traditional dropship include more maneuverability for the soldier within, less of a target for the enemy, and when deploying, allowing a ship to drop dozens of troops while maintaining evasive capabilities. Once on the ground, the pod's door is blown open via explosive gas bolts triggered by the occupant. Although the pod's design has been refined over the years, accidents do still happen. That, combined with the pod's semblance to a giant coffin, has resulted in some fairly grim nicknames for the pods and those who use them. They aren't called Hell Jumpers for nothing. In the time following the Covenant War, the UNSC partnered with military contractors to improve the pod's design. Advancements include more reliable in-flight communication, more powerful maneuvering thrusters, limited inertial compensation, new air brake design, improved structural integrity thanks to the incorporation of new metal matrix composites, and thermal superconducting elements added to the composite heat shield. The internal harness has also seen improvements, it now being highly configurable with hookups and system interlinks compatible with both ODST and Mjolnir suits. And that does it for today. Some very interesting new canon details hidden within the Killer Instinct Arbiter add-on, plus much desired details on the post-war drop pod. Thanks for watching as always, this has been Halo Cannon, and may you always walk in the light. Hey guys, thanks for watching. 
If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.